obviously we know that the AFL game is getting is only getting quicker, and that generally tends to trend throughout all um, of the lower levels, state league and community levels. Everything's going to be um, getting quicker, so the need for speed is all has always been important, but even more so now. So making sure you're training it. When I, when I talked about what I touched on before, making sure you're doing so on your main training sessions, some two to three reps at above 90% of your max velocity. So if you can move at 30 Ks per hour as your what your GPS tracker is uh, counted as your max speed, we want to be moving at above 28 Ks per hour um, at least once a week. So you may have done that on the game prior, then you may not need to do that in that, in that training. Maybe you just hit 80%, 85% that week. But if you didn't hit it in training in the game, previous game, if you played on Saturday and you train Tuesday, Thursdays, make sure you hit that at least on, on Thursday. Moving on to tip number two, max strength. Why is this important? Because it's a contested game. So if you're not working on your strength in your legs and your upper body, you're going to be easy to push over. You're going to lose your feet in the contest and you're not going to be able to dominate your opponent. So maintaining exposures of, of above 80 between 80 and 87% of your one rep max. So firstly, number one, if you don't know what your one rep max is, test it. If you don't feel comfortable doing one rep max by yourself, do a, a heavy three and use that as a guide. And we use Team Builder. You can use, you can search online for um, a calculation to estimate if you do three reps at 100 kilos, what would be your estimated one rep max? So I advise that you do that. You now have a guide what to do. Keep your lifts pretty consistent. So if you're in season, you're lifting heavy once a week with your legs, choose whether that's a trap bar deadlift or a box squat. They're my two favorite strength lifts in the gym, and I'll typically choose one or the other. For developing athletes, at times we might do both. Number three, consistency pays. So for the strength and conditioning coaches, make sure you're keeping it interesting. For our senior athletes, you might be going through a block where you're doing combating resistance using chains and bands. Um, you do, you're um, going from doing the, um, the, like I mentioned, the trap bar deadlift, uh, you're adhering to the uh, turnaround for games. So if you've got a five or six day turnaround, perhaps you reduce the range of motion. So they have the deadlift up on, on boxes to look after their lower backs and take a little bit of, um, less effort in the lift, but maintaining the intensity. So listen to your, to your athletes, adhere it to the schedule um, and add some variation where necessary, but consistency is, is key. So make sure the intent is always high we're lifting heavy every week um, and at times we're varying it to keep it um, from motivation and mental point of view, looking after the athletes that way. Use competition. So if you're lucky enough to have gym aware um, or you can use some apps now to track the velocity of the bar and so who's lifting their, their percentages the quickest. And our AFL key core exercise for this week is the rotational power throw. So make sure to check that out. I've added the link in the show notes where you've, if you want to improve your contest game, improve your ability to shrug off tackles, but also fend off. I've added in some great exercises, my favorite exercises on our YouTube playlist under AFL core exercises. So if that interests you, click the link in the show notes and I'll see you guys next week.